there's just one call. Can you show her? Oh, good. Figured it out. Oh, we're on now, Annie. All right. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm I'm sitting here waiting to find us, and here we are. Hi, everybody. Um, Annie and I were already live, even though you couldn't see us. So we're going to start over. So uh, thank you for joining. Apologize for the delay. Please send some hearts and uh, thumbs up for anything to let us know that you're definitely seeing us. Uh, a little technical difficulty there. I don't know what happened. So welcome back to this week's Inspired By series. Um, we're, we're happy to have you again, and we're excited to have uh, Annie Un Unrein back with us. And um, it's gonna be another exciting week of easy, Annie's gonna show us how to install easy zippers. So before we get started, I would like to talk about the quilt behind me. Um, for those of you that have questions about that, this is a uh, block of the month quilt. Uh, Morris Medley is the name of it. It's a block of the month, a 10 month block of the month, and the fabrics are William and Morris fabrics. So I'm gonna try and show you the quilt a little bit better for my camera, and my computer. I don't know if you can see it or how well you can see it, but if you're interested in that quilt, reach out to your retailer to see if um, she's going to be ordering into it. It's a beautiful quilt and we hope you enjoy uh, looking at that in the background this week. Um, Annie, we'd like to welcome you back this week. Thank you. I'm really excited to be here again this week. It's been so much fun to uh, share my Thursdays with you for the past couple weeks. And um, we've shown some models that we made with Free Spirit Fabrics. Last week, we showed some tips for picking fabrics and coordinates. And this week, we're going to talk about zippers. But before I do that, I want to know who the winners are from last week's giveaways. There were some really fun prizes last week. Yes, they definitely were. We thank you for uh, participating in the prizes. We love putting our fabrics with your patterns. So the uh, undercover bag was done in the Tula Pink homemade fabric. Um, so here are the fabrics again for you to look. And the winner of this was Debbie Johnson. So congratulations to Debbie. You've got a beautiful pack that will be being shipped your way. Please send us a, a PM message to let us know that, um, that, that, uh, that you're, you're the winner if you could send us your address. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. I'm getting notes <laughs> from everybody. Um, the other winner is the winner for flipping out and that's Susie Goforth. And she won this view, these beautiful fabrics from Kay Facet. Okay, Facet Collective, we've got a zigzag and a beautiful mosaic and the fabric luscious. These fabrics are in store now, so you can look for those if you're interested and you're not a winner. And the last bag is meshing around and the person that won this was from Instagram and it's so so Pran Maria. So these are the Kismet fabrics, the beautiful fabrics, they coordinate beautifully with the mesh and zippers that Annie has so kindly put in all of the packets. So thank you, Annie, for all of those. We'd like to welcome you, like I said. Uh, sorry about the delay, a little technical delay. Annie and I, I guess we're doing a practice run for about 10 minutes or so. So <laughs> sorry about that, <laughs> Annie, but I guess it was good. Um, so I would like to turn everything over to Annie. Uh, please tell us where you're viewing us from, what state, what country, uh, what you like about this series, what you've liked about seeing Annie. Um, we did a trunk show a couple of weeks ago, two weeks ago. Uh, last week we did colorful coordinates. Uh, this week we're doing zippers are easy and I'd like to turn it over to Annie and just give us some hearts and thumbs up so we still know that we're here. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sharon. I'm really looking forward to being here today. And one thing that I wanted to remind people is even if they um, missed last week's um, Facebook Live or the week before, they're posted on your Facebook page and we also have them on our website, on our blog page, so people can look at them. And also if they don't get here for the whole thing today or can't stay, they can always watch it after, after we're done. So um, we want you to be able to see it as much as we can. So today I'm looking forward to talking about zippers and taking away your fear of both making and installing zippers because zippers really are easy. 
To me, one of the most important features of any bag is the ability to open it, obviously, but also to close it so that everything inside is safe and secure. And I also want to have lots of pockets in my bags. And some of those bags I want to have zippers on, too. Well, when I started designing bags, I really have to admit that the thought of putting a zipper into any part of it scared the heck out of me. All I could remember was my high school home ec experience, and that wasn't fun. But I started studying bags that I owned and dissecting how the zippers must have been installed. And along the way, we've developed some really simple, easy methods for installing zippers. I know you are going to love them. But before we start talking about how to install zippers, let's talk about what kind of zipper to use because it really makes a difference. At Biani, we recommend handbag zippers for our project. Handbag zippers are specifically designed for purses and bags. If you look at it next to a dress zipper, which most of us are familiar with, you are going to see that the handbag zipper is wider and has a larger pull. And these are designed for the added wear and tear that a handbag gets. Just think how many times a day you zip or unzip your dress compared to the number of times that you're in and out of your purse each day. Then think about how hard it would be to replace a zipper in your purse or bag, and you'll understand why it makes sense to choose a zipper that's designed to withstand that type of use and abuse. By Annie's handbag zippers are nylon coil zippers. There are several advantages to this type of zipper. First, they're soft and flexible, yet strong and sturdy zip after zip. They are lightweight, so they won't make your purse or bag heavy. And the nylon coil is really easy to cut and easy to sew through, unlike a zipper with metal teeth or a sports zipper with chunky molded plastic teeth. Another benefit of nylon coil zippers is that the sliders can be put onto the zipper chain from either direction. This makes it really easy to make double slide luggage style zippers, which are fantastic for purses and bags and things like these little clam up bags. So if you want to open your bag this way, you can. If you want to open it that way, you can. And when you're done, you close it to the middle. It also means that we can make a bag using just one side of a piece of zipper tape as we did on this flipping out bag. At Biani, we carry zippers in 48 colors and several lengths and styles. Our shortest zippers are 24 inches long, and these are all single slide zippers. That means that the zipper has just one slide and it will open and close in just one direction. We also carry 30 inch and 40 inch double slide luggage style zippers. These zippers have two slides, which are attached rounded end to rounded end so that they kiss in the middle when they're closed. This enables you to open or close your bag from either end. If you're looking to stretch your zipper dollar, here's a tip. Because these zippers have two slides, double slide zippers can also be used to make two single slide zippers. Let me show you an example. This case in point bag, which we made using Tula's homemade fabric, is perfect for carrying crochet hooks, knitting needles, and more. You're going to see that's what we've got stuck inside. And inside, there's a removable page that has zippered pockets on each side made out of vinyl. This pattern requires two 10 inch or longer zippers for these pockets. But rather than buying two zippers, we can use just one 30 inch zipper to make both pockets and we'll still have leftovers for another project. So I've kind of started that process on this zipper. So the first thing you're, I'm going to do is mark 10 inch lengths. And when you do this marking, you want to make sure you're measuring from the outside of the stop, not the end of the tape. So I'm going to measure and mark a 10 inch line from that end to there. And then I'm going to go down to the other end and do the same thing. So I'm marking a 10 inch length there. Then I'm going to move one zipper slide into each section and sew across the tape and teeth on each side of each marked line. So I've done that here. So I've got one slide here, one slide here. I've stitched on each side. That line of stitching creates a stop so that my pulls aren't going to come off before I get my um, zipper installed in my project. And just a single line is sufficient. Finally, I'll cut along those marked lines 
to create two zippers. So I'm going to do that real quick. So I've got one 10 inch zipper ready to go for one project for one pocket, another 10 inch zipper ready to go. And I've got this zipper tape left over that I can make a zipper for another project. I'll show you later how to do that. We have one more awesome zipper product that we use, and that is called Zippers by the Yard. Zippers by the Yard includes four yards of zipper chain and 16 color-coordinated slides. And inch by inch, Zippers by the Yard are your best value, and they offer the most versatility. For instance, let's say you need a six-inch zipper for your little end control. You can make that. Let's say you want a 144-inch zipper for the slip cover you're making for the sofa. You can make that. But what happens if you want to make this little project, which is called Bling It On, that has all these pockets, and you want to divide these pockets into sections, and you want to be able to open this section without opening these two sections? Well, for that, you've got to have a zipper that has three slides on it. And where are you going to find a zipper that th has three slides? Nowhere but you can make one. So let me show you how easy it is to make zippers using zippers by the yard. Before we start, we need to look more closely at a zipper slide and a piece of zipper tape. There's one very important feature that sets by Annie's zippers by the yard apart from other similar products on the market. And that is that each end of our zipper tape has about three quarters of an inch of fabric before the teeth start. So you're going to see it on that end, and you're going to see it on that end. And having that extra fabric on the end makes a really big difference when you attach the slides, which you'll see as we proceed. Because it's so easy to attach a zipper slide to the fabric rather than to the teeth, I recommend that you preserve one end of the tape with the fabric until you have all of your zippers made. So get in the habit of always putting your slides on from one end and cutting from the other end. That ensures that it will always be extra easy to attach the slides. Secondly, the tape has a right side, which is where you see the teeth, and a wrong side, where you don't see any teeth. You're going to want to hold the tape with the right side up when you attach the slides. Now let's look at a slide. And if you look at a slide from the back, I'm going to turn it this way. You're going to see that there's a rounded end and a flat end. And if you look straight on at the rounded end, you're going to see there are two channels. If you look straight on at the flat end, there's going to be just one. If you put the zipper slide on from the rounded end, it's going to keep the zipper, slide sh zipper tape shut. If you put it on the flat end, it will open. And we're going to talk about that more in just a minute. So in order to, preserve, to ensure that you preserve one end of the tape without being cut, I recommend that you get in the habit of making your zippers using zippers by the yard by following five easy steps. First is mark. Second, attach slides. Third, move the slides into the marked sections. Fourth, stitch to create stops. And fifth, cut. We've created a little PDF tutorial that you can download and you can print it and it will remind you of all these steps. You're going to find it on our website. Just click on the zippers tab and we'll also post it on the blog for today's video. So let's, let's do one together so that you can understand what, what I'm talking about. So let's say that we want to make the zippers for the outside of this case in point. We need one 12 inch single slide zipper for the zipper on the front pocket. Mm -hmm. And we need a 30 inch double slide zipper for the opening at the top of the bag. So the first thing we're going to do is go mark the length. And I meant to have a piece here that didn't have any markings or anything on it. And I didn't do that. So you're just gonna see this a little bit further along. So pretend that these slides aren't here. So the first thing we're going to do is mark the length. So the first one I'm going to do is mark the 12 inch length for that single slide zipper. And again, I'm measuring from the end of the teeth, not the end of the tape. So I'm from the end of the teeth, I'm marking a line 12 inches away. Ignore these lines of stitching and ignore that slide because those aren't going to be there yet. Then I'm going to move 30 inches away and I'm going to mark another line across the tape. And that will be for my 30 inch double slide zipper. 
then we're going to be ready to attach the slides. And I'm going to use some yellow slides just because I think it will be easier for you to see. Since we marked the single slide zipper first, we're going to attach the slide for that zipper first. And that's, we, I like to go on from the rounded end because it keeps the zipper tape shut. So because the rounded end has the two channels, we need to have two pieces of zipper tape. So our first step is to separate the zipper tape so that we have two pieces. And you don't have to go very far, just a few inches, whatever's comfortable to hold. Then we're going to, with again, we've got our zipper with the teeth up, so right side up, and we're taking our zipper slide from the rounded end, and we're going to slide the left side of the tape into the left channel, and I let it stop when it gets close to the teeth, and then we're going to take the right side of the tape and slide it into the right channel, and we've got what looks like that. Then you can just take your finger, hold on to the tape, use your other hand to pull on, down on the slide, and you've got your slide attached. Now, before we continue, let's go ahead and attach the slides for our double slide luggage style. Now, for a double slide luggage style, we want our rounded ends to kiss in the middle once it's attached. So we wanna have both of our sides there. So that means the first one needs to be attached from the flat end. And again, the flat end is the one that has just a single opening. So we do not want to separate the zipper tape. So this is really an important step and make sure you pay attention to that. If you're putting it on from the rounded end, you wanna separate the tape. If you're going on from the flat end, just go on with your tape together. So what I do is I kind of pinch my tape together so it makes one piece and then I just insert my slide onto that center area and then you're going to see why I thought you couldn't do it this way. I you can pull and pull and pull on this and it's not going to go down. So I always thought you had to go on from the rounded end. But my son Casey figured out a really good trick that makes it really easy. Once you get it to the point where it's connecting with the teeth, take one finger here, one finger here, and just pull apart the zipper tape and your slide goes on really easily. And the beauty is now it's in the perfect position to attach the next slide from the rounded end which is what we want because we want our rounded ends to meet in the middle. So we're going to take our zipper slide, put the left side of the tape into the left channel, the right side of the tape into the right channel, hang on to it and pull. Now, one thing that I do here is that I usually take my zipper tape and lean, lean against the table so I'm holding it taut so that I can really get this nice and straight before I pull it on. And that ensures that I'm going to have a perfect double slide luggage style zipper without any um, bubbles in it. So we've got all of our zipper slides attached and now our next step is to go down and pull them into the marked sections. As you can see, I've already done that on here, so just pretend that you're going to do this. Now when you do the first zippers on your zipper tape, it's going to take you a little while to um, get them all pulled down, but um, you know, once you've made a few zippers, then it's not so bad. But if you get in that habit of pulling them on and then pulling them down, you're always going to preserve that end without it being cut. So now I've got one zipper slide pulled into my 12 inch section. I've got two zipper slides in the luggage style configuration pulled into my 30 inch section. And the next step then is to stitch to create stops. And I just take my sewing machine and stitch about an eighth of an inch from the line that I marked, come along the other side, I make sure I stitch on the end too. And that way I've got zipper slides or zippers stops that are going to be really easy to work with. These are gonna be so much easier than the big, um, you know, the metal stops that are on a regular zipper because you're not going to worry about hitting them with your needle and breaking your needle. So then once I've got that done, I'll just cut that apart like I showed you on the earlier one, and I'll have a 12 inch single slide and a 30 inch single slide ready to go for my project. And that's how easy it is to make zippers of any style. Hey, Annie, that, that's awesome. Um, I, I just learned a lot watching you do all that. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I mean, I've always wondered how you, you pull those zippers on so you make it look really easy. 
So thank you for sharing all of that. I was trying to look at some of the uh, questions that viewers have and somebody, uh, Valerie uh, had asked, are the measurements uh, finished size or do they include allowances? So I'm assuming that what she means is, uh, or what she's asking is, are there allowances left on either end of the zipper? But I'll, I'll let you answer that in one moment. Um, well, actually, do you wanna answer that right now? Sure, I can answer it really quick. Yeah, when okay. we design a pattern, for instance, on here, this is probably 10 inches across. So we call for a 12 inch or longer zipper because we always like to have at least a couple of inches extra. So when we call for a set size, it does include the overage. I learned that having a zipper longer than you need solves a multitude of problems and it's really the key to making installing zippers easy. So yes, we always build in the extra two to three inches when we tell you what size to buy. Okay, great. Yeah, I know that's true of garment making as well. You never want to be too uh, tight on the zipper. Otherwise it becomes a, a pain in the end trying to install it. So I'd like to welcome everybody uh, to the Free Spirit series. Uh, we're doing an Inspired By series and Annie from By Annie is our guest today. She's been on the past couple of weeks and we hope that you've enjoyed it. We did have a little delay in the beginning. So we apologize to some of you that had trouble uh, viewing us right away. Uh, we, we thought we were live, or I thought we were live, so we were already going, but we found out that we weren't. So <laughs> sorry to all of you that have found that frustrating. But um, Annie's showing us how to do zippers today, and uh, it's great. I've always wanted to learn how to do this, Annie, and I love how you showed how to pull, you know, put those zipper pulls on. Uh, it does look easy. Now I just have to try it. So. Uh, Anyways, uh, what are some of the, uh, what tips can you give us for putting a zipper into a project? Do you have any tips? I've got some great tips for that. Making and installing zippers really is easy. But before I forget, I want to remind everybody that we have a whole series of videos about zippers on the Biani.com website, and they were filmed with better camera angles. So if you had any difficulty seeing the steps that I showed today, be sure to check those out. So just go to biani.com and click on either the tutorials link or the zippers link. Either one of those will take you to the zippers are easy series and you'll find lots of helpful information there. If you click on the zippers link, you'll be able to also download and see our zipper color card. And in addition to the PDF um, handout that we did on zippers are easy, our zippers by the yard, we also did one on what I'm going to show you next. So sometimes it's helpful to have something printed when you're not able to watch it online. So be sure and, and uh, find both of those resources. Those are really good. So let's talk about how to install a zipper. And we're going to start by putting a zipper in a pocket made out of quilted fabric. So when you do this, um, the secret to putting a zipper in a pocket is to make sure several things. First of all, make sure you have these pieces right sides together. So I've got my zipper face down, my pocket right side up, and I've got my zipper hanging off on the end. I want to make sure that I've got this slide hanging off over here, because if you look at, uh, let's see if I have a zipper here that has slides on it. If you look at this zipper tape, can you see how the zipper tape bulges out where the slides are? As soon as I move those slides down, let's just do one at a time. As soon as I move that slide down, see how the zipper tape straightens out and gives you a nice straight piece. It's gonna be way easier to sew that zipper into your project with a nice straight seam if you don't have that bulge where your zipper slide is. So by having my zipper slide way out here, I have a nice straight piece of zipper tape. On these samples, I'm using our 24 inch zippers because that's the smallest size that we have. I never worry about having excess zipper tape left over because again, having a zipper longer than I need makes it easier. And I can always, once I cut this off, put an extra slide on here and make another zipper. So I'm going to show you how to do that too. So one really important thing is, if you look at this, you are going to notice that at the top, you do not see any fabric from my pocket. And if I turn this around, you're going to see that my zipper tape extends about a 16th to an eighth of an inch beyond the fabric. That is one of the most important steps in installing zippers that have a really beautiful finish. So just let that zipper 
hang out over the top of your fabric a little bit. Then you're going to sew this on. And I like to sew with my foot on the top. I sew on a Bernina and I use my number 37 quarter inch foot. One edge of the foot runs along the edge of the tape. The other side of my foot um, goes right along the zipper teeth and that makes it really easy to get a nice even stitch. So you're going to sew that in with a quarter inch seam. If you prefer to do it from the back, you certainly can. I just find it easier to do from the front. After I have that sewn in, then this next step is also really important. After it's sewn in, then you are going to go to the back, to the lining side of your pocket, and you're going to finger press your zipper tape down flat against it, and you're going to stitch along the very edge of the zipper tape. As you're doing that, you're going to make sure that all your raw edges are hidden. So a lot of times what I will do is I will take my stiletto and I will run it along that seam as I go, and you can see how the stiletto helps it to fold, and then I can use my stiletto to hold it in place. I can keep my stiletto there all the way until my needle gets to that point. I can't keep my fingers there that well. So I just run this along. If there's any loose threads sticking out, I use them to push it down and I stitch all the way down. So that's going to look like this. So I've sewn this with a colorful thread so you can see that. So this is the line of stitching attaching the zipper to the project. Here's the line of stitching stitching along the edge. One thing that I often see is I'll walk around when I'm teaching classes and I'll see places where those raw edges aren't hidden. And invariably what people will admit is that they did the stitching from the other side because they wanted it to look best on the outside. Don't do that. You want it to look, you want it to look good on the back too. And you're not going to be able to ensure that all those raw edges are hidden if you're stitching from the other side. So just stitch right along the edge of that and it's gonna look gorgeous on the other side too. And that's really all there is to installing a zipper. Now let's say we want to go put that zipper pocket into our project. On here I've used vinyl and we'll talk about that a little bit later, but it's the same thing. When you're ready to put it in your project, you've got several options. On this one, I just sewed it in the way it was. On this pocket, I added a binding across the top of the zipper. And that gives you a much more finished look to your project. It makes it look like you did something way harder than just binding the edge, laying your pocket down and stitching it in place. So either way will work, but no matter which way you choose, make sure that you have your zipper zipped all the way shut. So you want this zipper slide all the way out here. Again, that means you're going to have a nice straight shot when you go to stitch across here. And another really important thing is make sure when you start stitching, you start here. Don't start there or there or there. Start in this top right left corner of your zipper. So I always stitch across the top first, down the right, across the bottom, and up the left, making sure that before I stitch through the zipper tape right here, I pull my slide to the inside. Because in the next step, I'm gonna whack that extra zipper tape off and I don't want my slide out here because then I gotta figure out how to put it back on. And it's not that hard to put it on, but once it's sewn into a project, it's, it becomes more of a challenge because you have to undo stitching and line things up and get it just right. So don't forget to stitch, to cut that or pull that zipper slide in there before you stitch it. And all by any patterns are going to remind you of that. So pay attention to those. So we've, we're then we're going to cut our zipper um, tape off and we're going to have some zipper tape left. So let me show you how you're going to put a slide on that. It's not quite as easy as it was to put a slide onto the um, zippers by the yard because here we don't have the luxury of the fabric at the end. We've got cut teeth. On this, you pretty much have to go on from the rounded end. I haven't been able to figure out an easy way to get it on from the flat end. It's possible, but not easy. So again, we're going to separate our tape. And then just like we did before, we're going to take one side of the tape and put it into the left channel. We're going to put the right side into the right channel. Well, now the problem is you've got both hands busy hanging on to this. You don't have a third hand handy to pull down on that slide. And when I started demoing this, I would just turn to whoever I was demonstrating to and say, can you pull down on the slide? And we'd, we'd be off, we'd be ready to go. 
Well, if I was at home by myself or on a stage and no one was around, I'd use my teeth. And one day I was at a show and a lady came up when I was done and I said, can I help you? And she said, I'm a dentist and your teeth aren't made to pull on zipper slides. Stop that because that will cost you like a thousand dollars to get fixed. And I've never used my teeth again. So here's the trick to doing it if you um, are using cut tape. Did you, I hope you can notice that I only took my zipper tape about halfway into that slide. And I went in a little bit from an angle on each side, but it's only halfway there. Once I get it to that point, I can take this finger and I just give that a little tap, which pushes it down. And then it's simple and easy to pull it down. Now, the next important thing to know on this is that even though there's a stop here, this is the open end of my zipper. So I need to, when I put it in my project, if you're right-handed and used to opening your pocket from left to right, you need to make sure that you install this so that this end is on this side so that when you're done, your pocket opens the right way. Now let's take a look at this. This, let's say you want to do a little quick zip case. And that's what I am showing you here. So this is, um, I've got my zipper sewn into one side of the fabric. I've stitched it down. I've brought my edges of my fabric up and made them even with my zipper at the top. I let my zipper hang out a little bit, just like I did on the other. I've sewn it in. Now it's time to finger press this down and stitch it. Well, that's going to be really hard because I've got all this fabric here. And I hate to admit how long it took me to figure this out. But again, because I have a zipper longer than I need, all I have to do is open that zipper and I have a quick, easy way of just folding this down and stitching it. Everything lays flat and it's ready to go. After my zipper's installed, I'll put some, I'll sew the ends, I'll put a little handle on, I'll do a box bottom in each one and that bag's ready to go. So those are really fast. Now let me show you one other bag and one other technique that is, an, is a fun one to learn. So this is a hanging cosmetics bag that is made using our pattern um, travel essentials. And it's got mesh, vinyl pockets, and then this big quilted pocket at the bottom. And it's made to be really big so you can put your you know, hairspray, your pill bottles, bigger things in there. And a lot of times people look at this and say, there is no way I can do that. So let me show you how easy it is to make that pocket because I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised. So that particular pocket, starts as three rectangles of fabric. We've got one that makes the body of the pocket, one that makes the lid, and one that makes the base. And the first thing we're going to do is round two corners on both the lid and the base. And I like to use little circle rulers to do that. It's really important that the mass of this equals the mass of this. And in the pattern, we tell you to do a two and a half inch circle. If you go to your cupboard and pull out a three inch glass, you're cutting away a whole extra half inch of fabric and your pieces aren't going to fit as well. So make sure that you follow that with the size we say. And we use um, circle rulers from Creative Grids that work really easy. Let me, I actually do have one here. So this is the two and a half inch size. And what you're going to do is just lay it down on your fabric, get it so it's even on the sides and then just trim that fabric away right there and that gives you your perfectly rounded corners of the right size. Then we're ready to attach a zipper to this. So let's, so what we're going to do is take our zipper. Again, this is the end that we wanna open it from. So we wanna make sure we have the open end down here, but we wanna let it hang out on each end. So we've got extra on each end and we just lay the zipper down on top. Again, letting that little bit extra extend and I don't pin or clip this, I just start stitching. So I stitch a quarter of an inch from the edge all the way around and ease it as it goes around the corners. Then when I go to finger press that and stitch it down, I just fold a few little pleats in the areas where it had to ease around the corners. So there I've got my zipper installed and all my raw edges are finished on the inside and it looks beautiful on the outside. Now you're ready to attach this to your pocket and you're gonna look at that and say, I don't even know where to start. They're not the same size. How did this work? So here's the trick to this. This is 
eventually going to go up here. So lay this like this and then fold it over so that your right sides are together and you've got a nice angle here matching the long edge of this with the short edge of your pocket. And get your zipper so that it's even at the top and put your one little wonder clip on there. Then go down to the other end and do the same thing. So I get my long edges or my edges even. I clip it up here and clip that in place. Now, I could take my wonder clips and finish clipping this all the way around and try stitching around that curved edge. But again, because we're using this zipper longer than we need, all we have to do is open that out. And now we have a perfect straight stitch to stitch that in place. And it's going to fit perfectly and this is going to line up perfectly. So really simple, easy to do. Think you can do that, Sharon? Wow. <laughs> That is totally awesome. I've really enjoyed watching you do that. And I know many of our viewers have too. So um, yeah, I'm gonna have to rewatch this when, when we're done, Annie, because you've already shown us so many great tips. Um, I'd like to tell you a couple of things that I did pick up in the comments. Tanya loves your necklace. I love your necklace oh, too. Great bobbin you. necklace. Yeah, that's great. Um, a few of the people are asking about, it. we have many viewers from um, Europe, right now, Spain, awesome. England, and they're asking where they can purchase your patterns. Is there a European distributor? We do, byani.com um, has a European um, distributorship. So just go to Biani Europe or go to our website, byani.com and click on the Europe link and it will take you straight there. And we've got lots of stores in Europe also who um, sell our patterns. But yes, okay. you can definitely find all of our products there. Okay, great. Thank you. And Tammy Lee Jones uh, said that she's ordered something every week after she's watched this and she intends to do it this week as well. That's <laughs> so fabulous. that's good. Thank, Thank you, Tammy. Tammy. I can tell yes. you our shipping crew has been pretty busy the past few days. Well, that, that's great. We're glad to hear that. Um, a few of the people have been, uh, a few of the viewers here have been asking where to get the fabrics. Uh, so the fabrics are Free Spirit Fabrics dot com is our website. Um, you can go and you can look at our collections, but we sell our fabrics to quilting stores. So please reach out to your local quilting store and ask them if they're carrying a particular line that you've seen. Um, Annie has shown an awful lot of uh, CAFE fabric today. So you could ask them if they've got CAFE in stock or um, like I said, go to our website and take a look but we do only sell to uh, quilt stores. So I just wanna let you know that. Um, a lot of comments, they really love how the, you're installing zippers. So thank you, Annie. And yes, I do think, I, I love the tip about the extended, what you just did, what the last demonstration you just showed is like magic. So, yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just genius. So you're always learning something. There's never anything you can't not learn. Um, do you have any different techniques that you uh, that you could show us on installing a zipper and different materials? Absolutely. So we, a lot of times we like to make zip our pockets out of vinyl so we can see what's in them or out of mesh, partly for visibility, also because the mesh doesn't add any bulk in our project. And it also um, gives us a little bit of stretchiness so we can put bulkier items in them. The method of installing a zipper in a mesh or vinyl pocket is very similar to what I showed you for the quilted fabric, but there is one really important difference. When we install the zipper in our quilted fabric pocket, we put things right sides together. And then when we press the seam, we went to the lining side to enclose the raw edges. Because you can see through mesh and vinyl, if we did that the same way, we would get what looks like this. So I did that on this zipper. So I put right side down with my zipper, I finger press my zipper tape down, and as you can see, you can see the zipper through the vinyl. Some people don't like the way that looks, and it looks especially messy if you're doing that with mesh because you see all those edges. So we're gonna talk about both, but um, there's, there's a really simple solution to that. So we're going to talk about vinyl first. And the, the secret is, instead of putting right sides together, we're going to put wrong sides together. So obviously your vinyl and your mesh don't have a right or wrong side unless you've attached a binding or something, but, but the zipper does have a wrong side. So when we're ready to put a zipper in a mesh pocket, rather than doing right sides together, 
we're going to put wrong sides together. So I've got my zipper wrong side up, my vinyl's aligned on it. I still have that little bit of zipper tape extending along the edge, and I'm going to sew that with a quarter inch seam. Then I'm going to, just like I did before, I'm going to fold my zipper tape over and stitch along the tape, but this time I'm stitching on the front rather than on the back. And when I'm done, I've got this look. So you can actually see it also in here. So I did that one this way. It gives you just a much cleaner, more finished appearance, and it's super simple to do. The very same process, it just depends on which side of the zipper you sew on first. The biggest trick is making sure that you have your zipper in the right place. So what I will usually do is I'll I'll take my zipper and I'll lay it out and I'll say, okay, I want it to look like this when I'm done. And so I then just take the zipper and turn it over so that it's wrong side down and bring it up so that I know I've got my slide on the right end when it's finished. You can do that exact same thing on a mesh pocket. And that's what I have done on this pocket. So again, I put my zipper wrong side down. I laid my mesh on top, sewed my quarter inch seam and folded it down. But here's another option. On the mesh pocket that we did on this, which is also what we did on um, our um, ruler wrap back here, we want it to have a little bit more um, strength to that. And since we were already binding the bottom edge, we thought, why don't we just bind these edges too? So on these, we did a binding along the top of the mesh, and then you have to attach it a different way. So to do that, we took our binding, and this is a two inch strip cut the same width as the fabric. We fold our binding in half and pin it. We don't press it. And then we lay our mesh on top and stitch across this with a quarter inch seam. You can sew this from the front or the back. I prefer to sew from the front so I can keep an eye on this. When you're sewing through mesh, most of the time you're just sewing through air. And that, um, you know, sometimes your mesh wants to pull away. So if I keep it on top, I know that it's, I'm keeping my edges even. So I sew across that with a quarter inch seam. And then I'm going to take my stiletto or little pressing tool and I'm going to press my seam up so that my seam is going up towards my binding. Then I'm going to take my binding and fold it over so that all of my raw edges are hidden. I'll just put a couple wonder clips on here. And that's going to, and then I'm going to stitch right along the bottom edge of that. So when I'm done, it's going to look like this. So I've got my mesh with my binding folded in place. And when I'm doing bindings, I usually always, it looks the best on the outside. So as this comes out of my machine, I just put a little wonder clip on there. So I know that's the right side because when I attach this to my zipper, I want right side up. So let's say we're going to attach that to this zipper. We have a product um, that we sell called basting tape. And I'm not sure that I have any here. You can use a glue stick, you can use pins. I like to use basting tape. Unfortunately, we are out of it here at the warehouse. Um, we've not been able to find it at all. I'm not sure what there's a big, I understand, you know, elastic and I understand interfacings, but I haven't figured out what people are using basting tape for. So if you know, let us know, we'd love to know. But anyway, we have, eighth inch wide basting tape. That's like a double face tape. It has a paper on one side, you, you run it along your binding, pull the paper away and then it's sticky. So I will take that and put it right down on top of my zipper. The secret when you do this is you want to make sure that when you align this on there, and this works really well if you have basting tape on there because it stays where you put it. But when you put this down, you do not want to see zipper tape underneath here. And when I lift it up, I don't want to see fabric. Let's go to a place that's pink so it's more obvious. So you don't see any orange tape down there at the bottom. And at the top, on the other side, you don't see any pink fabric. So you want it right along that very edge. And then you're just going to do like I did here. So about the same distance from the top as your bottom stitch was. So I sew across here. I go down and I sew across the bottom. And that gives me a really nice finished edge on both sides of my zipper and a really pretty look. So that's the tricks to installing zippers in vinyl or mesh, both about the very same. Well, that's awesome, Annie. We have, we have some more questions for you, so hope you okay. don't mind. Not at all. <laughs> um, 
So Barbara is asking when you're sewing on the second row of stitching, is there, uh, when you're doing the second row of stitching to the zipper, is there a particular uh, foot that you're using on your machine? When like what I foot use, would, when I ahead. do zippers, I use my number 37 quarter inch foot pretty okay. much exclusively when I'm sewing bags. If your machine, if you're not sewing on a Bernina and you don't have that foot, sometimes your regular foot is too wide. So you might need to switch to a zipper foot. And sometimes a zipper foot, I've seen so many different styles. On the Bernina, the zipper foot, you have to actually move your needle over so that it's going on whichever side. Um, so that works. But I just use my quarter inch foot. It, because our zippers have that extra width, that is just the perfect foot to use. And a lot of times people will say, oh, well, did you use a, a, a Teflon foot when you stitched on the vinyl? Well, when I'm sewing on the zipper, I'm sewing here with the vinyl on bottom and the zipper on top. So I'm never contacting the vinyl. When I fold it over and stitch along the edge, I'm not contacting it. But I usually will stitch to a Teflon foot when I go to sew this in my project. Because if you have a Teflon foot, it just slides right along that vinyl without sticking at all. The, um, if you don't have a Teflon foot, I recommend that you put some um, tape, like masking tape, painter's tape works good, on the bottom of your foot if you have a plastic foot. If you have a metal foot, it'll probably slide fairly easily and you won't have troubles, but that really helps for the vinyl. And for the mesh, it's just like sewing with fabric. It can be a little stretchy, so we try and make sure that we keep it really stable. Our mesh has kind of a little coating on it, which helps keep it more stable. It's not nearly as slick and wonky as some of them. But um, yeah, that quarter inch foot's my favorite. Yeah, it's my favorite too. So that's a, that's a great information. Thank you. You're Margaret welcome. asks, can the bags be washed? So yes, absolutely. Soft and stable is 100% washable and dryable. And usually when I'm washing a purse, I don't throw it in the dryer because I don't like to hear the hardware banging around in the dryer drum but it, it's definitely washable and dryable. So I usually let them air dry. You can take a piece of soft and staple and throw it in the washer all by itself and it comes out just like it went in. So it's not like it's going to fall apart. And someone last week had asked, do I pre-wash my fabrics? I usually don't because usually we're in such a hurry to get them quilted and made into models that we don't want to take the time. Also, I really like the sizing that comes on the fabric. And I think the longer I can keep it on there, the more protected my fabric is going to be, but, but I wash my bags all the time and the soft and stable combats any little bit of shrinkage that there is and they hold up beautifully. Okay, great. Thank you. And Linda wanted to know the binding. When you made the binding on those bags, do you make it as a bias tape or is it just a straight cut? These, because I'm doing a straight stitch across here, these are just straight bindings. The only time I do bindings is if I'm going around a curved edge. So like here, this is a bias binding on this pocket. Um, the inner binding that finishes between the bottom and that, that's a bias binding because again, it's going around these curved edges. So I'll do bindings if they're curved edges, straight grain bindings if they're straight edges. And I'm gonna talk a lot about that in a couple weeks in the, in the session that we're going to do. I've got so many great tips to share about bindings. So make sure you come join us then. Right, you've got a lot of great tips. So we have lots of questions and wonderful awesome. tips. So thank you. Um, earlier, you mentioned something about making a zipper use just one side of a piece of a zipper tape. Can you show us how that works? Yes, so this little bag, which is part of our glow and go pattern is made with just one piece of fabric and one side of a piece of zipper tape. It's the same technique that we do on our flipping out. This is one piece of zipper tape that gets sewn to the whole thing and then you put the slide on. So basically I put the zipper in exactly the same way as I did the other, although we did something a little different on here because we made a separate lining. We didn't want to quilt this bag. So the, the method of construction is a tiny bit different and the pattern will explain that. But, but I've got my zipper installed and before I go to sew my side seams, I need to put a zipper slide on here. So I'm going to show this to you with a pretty pink one, which I think would look so nice on here. So what you're going to do is make sure that you've got your zipper tape trimmed. So it's the same length from your edges. And then just like we did when we were doing zippers by the yard, we're going to make sure that we've got our zipper tape 
right side up so you can see the teeth. This is very similar to making the zipper with the leftover tape. I'm gonna take my slide so that I've got the rounded end that has the two channels. And again, one side's going in here, one side's going in here. I back them up so they're even. I give that that little tap to get it pushed on there and then I pull it on. Then I can turn this inside out, pull out my lining and sew my side seam and then do my box to bottom. And when I'm done, I have a cute little bag like this. So this is really fun because at a quarter yard of fabric, you cut it in half and you get two bags, one 30 inch zipper, you cut in half, you get two bags. So I always tell people when you buy this glow and go pattern, um, you know, even if you um, don't think you need two bags, make two because then you've got a great one to have for a gift. Yeah, that's, that's totally awesome. I love that. It's a great tip there too. Um, some of the viewers are asking if you have, um, do you pre-treat the fabric in any way after you've made your bag? I do not. Um, I found that they're so easy to wash. One thing that we occasionally will do, I don't know if you can see the inside of this bag, but if we're doing a makeup bag or a cosmetics bag, we have a product called Slicker that's an iron-on laminate, and we can put that on the inside of a bag and turn any smooth fabric into a laminate. So that's a fun one to do. I would not use that on the outside of a bag, but on the inside of a bag, it works fabulously. But no, I just figure the, the fabrics are so easy to wash that I just throw them in the washer and when they get dirty, call it good. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Um, all right, Annie, you've given us so many uh, tips and tricks here. This is wonderful. And I don't know if I've jumped ahead here. Um, I think we've pretty much covered everything that I meant to cover. I was going to mention to remind people that we have the um, free patterns on our website and both our Easy Does It and our Peacekeeper and our Call Me pattern all include instructions for putting on zippers and they have really great add-on videos that go with them. So you can download those patterns and videos free at our website. So if zippers are really new to you, um, go check those out. And again, if you have any questions about any of the models we've shown today, there's a list on our blog um, that shows what fabrics they were, what colors of zippers, what colors of mesh. So just go to the blog link and you'll find all of those there. So that'll be really helpful. And then go to the zippers page and download the, um, the handouts for the zippers by the yard and, and you'll have more information then. It'll keep you busy all week. And then come back next week and join us because we're going to talk about um, handles and straps. And don't forget, that all of our products are available at your local quilt shop. Um, check with them to get the patterns and supplies. And if they don't have them, remind them that all of our products are available either directly from us or from their favorite distributor. So please help us do everyone, do your part to keep our local quilt shop strong and successful. Yes, that, that's very true. Uh, thank, uh, thank you, Annie. Again, thank you so much for letting me be here. I've, I've so enjoyed doing this. I hope everyone enjoyed seeing how easy it is to make and install zippers. And don't forget to send us pictures. We can't wait to see the projects you make. And to give you a little extra incentive, we've put together some giveaways. So let me grab the first one. I'll, I'll show you. Um, the first one we're going to do is the pattern for Clam Up. And with that, we are giving a zippers by the yard that is a white one and it has 16 different colors of pulls. So Sharon, you wanna show them um, what fabric you've picked to go with this? Yes, thank you, that, that's beautiful. So we've got this uh, Tula Pink fabric here. This is called our, her True Colors line and this is shipping in June. And this will be married up with Annie's Clam Up bag. So the winner for this week will be getting these fabrics, which are all very beautiful. And Annie has another one. Okay, the second price that we're going to do is our pocket packers pattern, which is a mouthful to say. That includes instructions for four different styles of bag. You can do one with one pocket, two pockets, three pockets, or this one has four pockets. And so we're sending three zippers, a 24 inch, a 30 and a 40 inch, which is enough to make any 
style or more, depending on which one you pick. So um, that will include the pattern and the three zippers. What fabric are you going to put with that? I can't wait to see because those are fun colors of zippers. Yes, they are. So the, those zippers will match perfectly. These are the fabrics. So this is K, the Kate Bassett Collective. And these fabrics will be in the stores uh, in August of this, of this year. They're not there yet, but they will be coming soon. But look how great these are. And this one's like a watermelon. Well, not like, it is a watermelon. So great fabrics, great zippers. And that bag was the Pocket Packers. And we have the last one. The last one is Back At You 2.1, and that makes this cute little backpack, which is awesome for running around town or for, for your kids. It's got a zipper on the top, a little magnetic flap, zippered pocket on the back, and then when you open it up, oh, I've got fabric in here to keep it from falling over, but another zippered pocket and a pocket in the back. And you can do some of those out of mesh as well as fabric. And for that, we're doing the pattern and two 30 inch zippers, which again, you're going to use one 30 inch zipper on the top. The other one you're going to cut in half to do the zipper on the back and the zipper on the inside. So who's, what fabric are you putting with that? Well, this is great fabric. So this is Lorraine Turner. Uh, this will be a really cool backpack. Uh, this fabric is shipping to stores in uh, May and it's called Calico Horses. So that's the main print. And I think I had shown some last week to go with a, a prize last week. This is a different version of what looks like uh, horse tails. And there's some beautiful lupin here, lupin flowers, which are just beautiful. And all of these fabrics will be married up to make a beautiful backpack to go with Annie's uh, gift. So the question for this week, if you would like to be a winner, and I'd like to be a winner, <laughs> <laughs> is uh, did, this did this segment inspire you to make a project with zippers? I know as every week, Annie, I'm definitely inspired. And what project will you make from by Annie? And which fabric will you use from Free Spirit? We'd love to hear from you. So let us know uh, how we've inspired you this week. Um, Annie, I'm going to put us both on the screen right now. So I believe we're both looking on the screen, I hope. <laughs> um, okay. So I'd like to just thank you and I'd like to thank all of the viewers for tuning in again this week. We enjoy having you and we enjoy Annie so much. So thank you, Annie. Um, we'd like to remind you that this is, uh, Annie's been showcasing all of her patterns with Free Spirit Fabrics and she has many, many bags and we appreciate that showing us all the love and showing the viewers all the love of how wonderful and versatile Free Spirit Fabrics are. So if you have any questions um, about where to get free spirit fabrics, uh, you can, well, you can go to our website, it's freespirit.com, and you can look out for any of your local retailers who sell free spirit fabrics. And if they don't have them, ask them to get them. And Annie, would you like to tell us uh, where everyone can go for your uh, patterns and bags? Yes, you can find our patterns. First, check at your local quilt shop. If you can't find them there, if your shop's closed or whatever, you can find them at buyannie.com. So it's B-Y-A-N-N-I-E.com. And don't forget, even if you do get the patterns and supplies from your local quilt shop, don't forget to come to our website to check out our um, videos and all of the handouts we have. One thing I don't think I mentioned earlier, but any of our patterns that we're showcasing in this series, um, have that have add-on videos with them you'll see a little circle on the front and it will say there's a five dollar coupon so we film a video to go with we've got like 30 some patterns now that have them and it doesn't go through every single step but it goes through a lot of them and anything we think we need you might need help with we show you how to do and then our free patterns kind of cover a lot of the other basic details but when you buy the pattern there's a coupon inside that enables you to get the add-on video at no charge. Normally they're $5. So make sure that you buy the pattern and download the video. And we recommend that you watch the whole thing before you start cutting, sometimes even before you pick your fabric, because you're going to get some ideas about where pieces go and how they work. And, and that's sometimes helpful. Thank you right. again so much for joining us. Thank you so much, Sharon, for inviting me to be part of this. It's been really fun. And I can't wait to see you back next week to give you some tips on handles and straps.
Yes, we're looking forward to we're going to, we'll be doing handles and straps next next week and the week after we'll be doing bindings. So please, you know, join us. We will be back on uh, May 14th at three o'clock, um, provided we go live at three. So again, apologies for that. And um, this will be posted on our website. Uh, I'm sorry, on our Free Spirit uh, Facebook page. So if you want to go back and view the video, you can. And again, as Annie has already said, you can go and look at all of her busy videos online as well, the ones that they offer. So thank you for tuning in. We appreciate all your comments and all of your love and hearts and everything that you're sending our way. And uh, we will see you next week. So. Thanks Take again. care until next Look week. Look forward to seeing you then. Thanks All so right. much. All right. Thanks, Annie. Appreciate bye -bye. it.